The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Right now on a New Year's edition of UMass Sports Insider. Conference play is about to begin for the UMass basketball teams. And as the Minutemen get ready to open the league slate with a pair of road contests, we preview things with head coach Derek Kellogg. And as the calendar turns, UMass football now embarks on its new status as a conference independent. So we sit down with the AD to tell you what you need to know. Plus, they've been a big part of UMass football and basketball for decades, but now the UMass band is becoming a key figure in the atmosphere at hockey contests at the Mullen Center. You'll hear all about it from the director himself. Ringing in the new year with much fanfare. UMass Sports Insider, here it goes. You're watching UMass Sports Insider. Presented by Mafre Insurance. Coca-Cola. And Office Depot Office Max. Lots has changed over the past 12 months for UMass Athletics. And as we begin 2016, we look forward to continued success on the fields of play for all the Minutemen and Minute Women squads. Coming up later in the show, we take a look back at some of the top plays from the past year. Hi there, Happy New Year, and welcome to UMass Sports Insider. I'm your host, Josh Maurer. You'll want to see the top 10 plays of the year coming up later in the show. Lots of exciting moments, and also in a few minutes, our conversation with Director of Athletics, Ryan Bamford, about upcoming football schedules as an independent. But we begin with men's hoops. Atlantic 10 play begins this weekend for Coach Kellogg and company with a road matchup at LaSalle. But the squad finished out non-conference play with a big victory on Tuesday night against LIU Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Let's take a peek back at some highlights presented by Office Depot, Office Max. Space blew at him, rebounded by Dante Clark. Clark up ahead to space, hop step, gets to the rim, scoops it up with his right hand off the glass and in. Tied at nine as scored and rebound. Clark to inbound, fires to the right corner, Trey Davis for two, it's good. A switch is up ahead. CJ Anderson to the foul line, leaves it Bergantino and he goes up with a two-handed dunk. Time out called. St. Teal plays off him. Jabari gets the screen for Bergantino. What a spin move inside. Wild back shot with his left hand drops. A beautiful move. And now we welcome on head coach Derek Kellogg, again presented by Office Depot, Office Max. Coach, it's just about time to start Atlantic 10 play. You started on Sunday night at LaSalle, a 5 o'clock game. Tell us a little bit about this road trip. You're going to have to start the conference because you go to LaSalle and then you go to Dayton after that. Yeah, when you say road trip, you mean road trip as uh, we're going to stay on the road from uh, Philadelphia on out to Dayton. Um, and we start on the road for the first time in a while with both games, our first two uh, conference games on the road. And, um, you know, the conference this year is uh, really tough. I'm watching a lot of games on television, been able to watch LaSalle and both Dayton quite a bit. And uh, this is a league that I think rivals really any high major league across the country. Um, one with a ton of high-level non-conference wins, a great non-conference winning percentage, and uh, to win on the road in this league. As a matter of fact, just to win in this league right now is one of the tougher conferences in the country. If you look at the landscape of the conference, coming into the beginning of, of the slate of games that, that everybody has to play 18, George Washington's been ranked non-conference. They've kind of separated themselves. It looks like Dayton is strong again. Rhode Island's been hit by injury, but they're picked to be near the top. How do you see, how do you see the top of the league, the teams that you're really gunning for? Well, if you just look at the conference and the records of some of the teams uh, going into conference play, when you've been throwing St. Joe's and Fordham and teams like that that um, you know are almost at an 80% winning percentage out of conference with, the, uh, with your usual VCUs and Dayton's and GW's and Rhode Island and Richmond and teams of that nature, even St. Bonaventure is playing very well. This is a conference that could have seven, eight, maybe even nine uh, postseason teams this year. I would say there's even more than that, except you probably can only take so many. So this is a conference where every night out you're going to have to be at your best, and um, you have three or four potential top 25 teams. And I didn't even mention Davidson. So it's going to be on Sunday, it starts. How does the play change? How does the intensity, how does the game planning, how does all of that change when you get into league, the, the league slate? Well, I think, um, you know, for the most part, we've had a lot of coaches that have been at the same schools for a long time. I think your uh, coaching characteristics really come out um, where you're not changing so, so much from year to year. So we have a pretty good idea of what coaches doing at, 
either LaSalle or Dayton or St. Joe's or, or a lot of those different places. So then it becomes down to a, a couple small adjustments, a couple things that uh, plays that could make or break a game. And more often than not, there's going to be a lot of close games that you hope your, uh, your uh, teaching and coaching and practice can carry over to the contest. Well, Coach, have a safe road trip. Very happy New Year to you. Thanks for spending some time with us. Well, I appreciate it, and uh, thank you very much. Happy New Year to you also. Head Coach Derek Kellogg, it's time for us to take our first break here on UMass Sports Insider. Don't go far away, though, when we come back. We'll talk UMass football with the AD as the schedules have been finalized for the next couple of seasons as an independent. You'll get the lowdown from the man in charge on the other side. He drives, he shoots, he scores. That's right, it's basketball season and your UMass men and men are ready to take to the court at the Mullen Center. Don't miss out on the fun. Be sure to get your seats for this season's premium matchups and exciting game day action. Choose your games with the Maroon Pack or the Musket Pack. Select three great games for only $55 or five games for $90. Great seats are still available. And single game tickets are starting at just $20. Get your game on. Call 866 UMass Ticks or visit UMassAthletics.com to lock in your seats today. thinking insurance company with a global network focused on taking care of you and your family providing freedom from worry everywhere you go Moffray insurance a forward-thinking insurance company with a global network providing friendly service with over 2,000 professionals taking care of you and your family Moffray insurance I'm getting ready to shop for school supplies, and I'm kind of super excited about it. A number two pencil, it'll get you through the day. This is what you need. Why didn't I get enough pencils? Like, I'd open a pack of paper and be like, it smells like learning. <laughs> I love that sound. Oh, the future is now, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I'm going to get. This right here. I am a student again, and I can do anything. And I have an agenda. <laughs> Leadership isn't given, it's earned, realized, accomplished, fulfilled, won. Leadership isn't given, it's taken. Welcome back to UMass Sports Insider. It's New Year's Eve and it's time to catch up on things happening around the UMass football program. We welcome on Director of Athletics, Ryan Bamford. This conversation presented by Office Depot, Office Max. So let's talk about what's recently happened. You completed some upcoming football schedules. Next year's done and then we announced a home and home with Coastal Carolina, which is a program that's transitioning to the FBS level. Bring us up to speed how the, the upcoming football schedules look. Yeah, well, we've built, now that we're moving into independent football, we've uh, built schedules for the next three years and looking forward to um, playing as an independent for at least those, those three years. Really, uh, it, the schedule's been in process since I got here in March, or since I took the job in March, been trying to work through 2016, 17, and 18, and feel good about the recent uh, announcement of Coastal Carolina in 17 and 18. It allows us to fill... Um, the 17 schedule, which is now complete, and now we're close to finishing 18 as well, which is very positive news for us on the recruiting front. We use it in recruiting, and as well as uh, when we go out and market season tickets. So independency begins now, basically officially, as your agreement with the MAC comes to an end. I know that you've been talking about a lot of the, the flexibility that being a, a football independent gives you for your program. Tell the viewers a little bit, if you would, Ryan, about what, what that means. What, what's it going to allow you to do, being a football independent? Well, being a football independent gives us, you know, honestly, access to greater visibility, uh, moving outside of the MAC, the chance to play. And next year, we're, you're going to see it when we play Mississippi State and Boston College at home, two power five schools, go on the road to Florida and South Carolina and BYU. 
uh, really a tough schedule, but it, it allows us to have national visibility as a brand, as an FBS brand. It also uh, really allows us to align and figure out what our media rights agreement is. Now that that comes back to us, where we place ourselves on television, and we're going to sort through that in the next probably couple weeks or month and try to figure out sometime around maybe signing day, maybe announcing something with uh, that media rights agreement. One of the things you brought up earlier was upcoming games that you're going to have against Boston College and UConn, and that's a, an emphasis that you've really uh, put on playing local teams, New England rivals. I yeah. think fans like seeing that, and I know you have it now for eight years. You're gonna play each of those teams four times. Yeah, exactly. That, that was a really positive thing. We made that change here in the last couple of months. It was really positive for major college football in this region to really take a foothold. To allow Boston College and UConn to play each other, we had to shift some of our schedules. We were happy to do that. In return, we get to play UConn four times and BC four times over the next eight years. And we're aspirational. We, you know, we aspire to be where UConn and Boston College are currently. Um, they've done well in the FBS ranks, and so we're, we're going to try to continue to push uh, the envelope on some of those scheduling things in the region and outside the region, but the BC and UConn deal is, is absolutely a, a win for us. And I know one of the biggest questions you always get is where are you going to play these games moving forward? Yeah. Next year's set schedule is set. After that, I know it could still be in flux, but McGurk and Gillette, they could still both be in play? Yeah, so we'll be at four games at Gillette next year, two games at McGurk. I've said it a lot on Twitter and other places in my comments with the media that I believe college football is meant to be played on campus. And we would, the Patriots and Gillette have been absolutely tremendous partners for us, but in an ideal situation, we'd like to bring a majority of our games back to McGurk. And uh, we think in 17, we're going to be able to do that. We'd like to continue a relationship with Gillette and the Patriots moving forward where maybe we bring a game or two to their stadium once a year especially if it's a, a, you know, a national product like a Boston College or a Mississippi State that we think can draw some attendance. Well, 2016. Boy, it seems like you've gotten a lot done in the last year, huh? <laughs> it's been, a, I'll tell you, it's <laughs> been a busy eight months. It's been a lot of fun. We're working hard, trying to move the needle, trying to move our programs forward, not just football, but all of them, and excited about where we're headed. All right, Ryan. Again, Happy New Year. Thanks so much for spending some time with us. Thank you, Josh. UMass Director of Athletics, Ryan Bamford. We're stepping aside here on UMass Sports Insider. Our New Year's edition continues right after this. We'll show you how the atmosphere at UMass Hockey Games has changed this year, getting louder and livelier with the addition of the UMass Band. You'll hear from its director next. Keep it right here. He drives, he shoots, he scores. That's right, it's basketball season and your UMass men and men are ready to take to the court at the Mullen Center. Don't miss out on the fun. Be sure to get your seats for this season's premium matchups and exciting game day action. Choose your games with the Maroon Pack or the Musket Pack. Select three great games for only $55 or five games for $90. Great seats are still available. And single game tickets are starting at just $20. Get your game on. Call 866-UMASS-TICKS or visit UMASSathletics.com to lock in your seats today. Welcome back to UMass Sports Insider. It's our New Year's edition. One of the great traditions at any Minutemen sporting event, especially football, and over the years basketball, has been watching the great performances put on by the band. And we have the Minutemen Marching Band director with us, Tim Anderson. This segment presented by Peter Pan. It's so good to see you. And Tim, this year, in addition to the hoop band and the football marching band, we've added a hockey band at the Mullen Center. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, thanks for having me, Josh. You know, it's been a lot of fun adding that. That's something that when Ryan Banford came on board, that was something he was really wanted to have happen. And we talked about it and found ways to make it work. And uh, so far we've done two games in the fall semester, and then we're gonna start in January. I think the uh, January 5th is that we play Yale here, and we'll have the band for that, and pretty much every game throughout the spring semester, and knock on wood, the uh, Hockey East Tournament. Tell me about how different it is to learn how to play for the different sports because, well, your students, they have to adjust to, to the different rules and everything that goes along with that. The biggest difference when we did our first hockey games was the amount that we all played. We weren't expecting that, you know, how many times. And many of us had gone to hockey games beforehand weren't ready for just how much that was going to be involved. It was a great year again for your band during the football season, and, and we love watching you perform. Take us through what the fall was like for the, for the football marching band. It was a lot of fun. We had a, you know, we start about a week and a half before school starts. We do a band camp, which is long days, 8 a.m. to sometimes getting done around 10 p.m. And then once school starts, it's every weekday, 4.40 to 6.10. And then on game days, we even if via Gillette or McGurk, it's a pretty full day. And I think that's a great point. You, you talk about the time that's involved. 
it's kind of like almost being one of our student athletes, right? If you're a member of, of the band, whether it's the outdoor marching band or the indoor bands during the winter, you're giving up a lot of time that you might not have as a student. Yeah, it, it is a class. Both the indoor bands and the outdoor ones are a class, but I think uh, for the marching band, they get two hours, uh, two credits for about a, well, I couldn't even do the math of how many hours goes into it. Well, tell me a little bit about what it's like for your hoop band. As, as both the men's and women's seasons are now well underway, the performances, how are they going, and, and what's it been like so far for the winter sports season? That's always a lot of fun. We sort of, there's that odd time when football and basketball kind of overlap. So we, as the football season starts to wind down, we start uh, you know, taking away from some days of the marching band and just do the hoop band, or now we call it the sports band. That becomes a, every Monday, and through basically till the spring break, because that's when basketball ends, we do rehearsals for that. So we're constantly trying to get new tunes out. You know, I was gonna ask you, and as we, as we start to wrap this up, I think these are interesting fans that people would want to know. How are the songs that you perform selected? How, how does that process work itself out? I take advice from the students and we listen to hear what's the latest thing. I feel like we need to play music that's relevant to them. So we find out what, is, what are the students listening to these days and find out what we can get and make that work for the band. So that's kind of, we try to stay uh, kind of ahead of the curve with that. And then how, how do you view your responsibility as whether it's a pep band indoors or a marching band outdoors during football season? To kind of summarize, what do, what do you view the responsibility of your bands? I think it's two folds. One is, you know, support the teams, obviously. You know, as soon as the Minuteman score a touchdown, the fight song's up, or, you know, they take center court here. But also, it's also to uphold the, uh, the dignity of the university. You know, you walk around this campus, you know that the Minuteman marching band, starting with George Parks and continuing, has been a long, long tradition of excellence. So I think it's that, promoting the UMass brand and just, you know, making sure the students have a whole lot of fun while doing it. Well, we hope you continue to have a, a great season as we get into 2016. Thanks so much for coming by, Tim. Thank you so much, Josh. Yeah, Minutemen Marching Band Director Tim Anderson joining us here on UMass Sports Insider. We'll be right back in just a few moments. On the other side, we look back at the top plays of 2015 for UMass Athletics, featuring some record-breaking individual performances as well as monumental team achievements. Counting them down for you next, we'll be right back. Leadership isn't given. It's earned. Realized. Accomplished. Fulfilled. One. Leadership isn't given. It's taken. Welcome back to UMass Sports Insider. It's time to turn the calendar to 2016. But before we bid farewell to the past year of UMass Athletics, it's time for one fond look back at some of the best moments from the Minutemen and Minute Women, counting them down from 10 to 1. It's the plays of 2015. Here they are, presented by Mafre Insurance.
stop. Shot plays off for Delario. The shot and a goal scored on the near side. Stopped for UMass. The ball coming in from Kirsch and a shot and a goal scored by Melanie Kirsch. Ball is stopped and sticks up at the top. Kirsch with the shot in and a goal. one over the middle to Sharp. Tajay makes the catch, racing to the left side. Inside the 10, he's out of bounds. There's the record. Tajay Sharp, the most receiving yards in UMass football history. Door curls up the other way. Here's a four on two, leaves it off Kravchenko. Headman pass, shot and a goal. UMass wins it. It's Mr. Saturday morning, Shane Walsh. Shane Walsh, we've been calling him Mr. Friday Night UMass Mobs, the junior from Massachusetts, Shane Walsh. And with 8.18 to go in the fifth overtime, UMass breaks the deadlock. Four to three, Massachusetts wins. Shane Walsh came down the left side. Kravchenko was involved. But Shane Walsh, the right-handed shot, got to the top of the faceoff circle, down to our left to let a snapshot go. Peterson was out of position. That hockey overtime goal, the top play of the year and one of the top plays nationally in all of college hockey, Shane Walsh's goal at Notre Dame. We hope for many more great and exciting moments in 2016 from all of our UMass teams. And we'll be back to wrap it up right after this. He drives, he shoots, he scores. That's right, it's basketball season and your UMass men and men are ready to take to the court at the Mullen Center. Don't miss out on the fun. Be sure to get your seats for this season's premium matchups and exciting game day action. Choose your games with the maroon pack or the musket pack. Select three great games for only $55 or five games for $90. Great seats are still available. Single game tickets are starting at just $20. Get your game on. Call 866-UMASS-TICKS or visit UMASSathletics.com to lock in your seats today. thinking insurance company with a global network focused on taking care of you and your family providing freedom from worry everywhere you go Moffray insurance a forward-thinking insurance company with a global network providing friendly service with over 2,000 professionals taking care of you and your family Moffray insurance I'm getting ready to shop for school supplies, and I'm kind of super excited about it. A number two pencil. It'll get you through the day. This is what you need. Why didn't I get enough pencils? Like, I'd open a pack of paper, and I'd be like, it smells like learning. <laughs> I love that sound. Oh, the future is now, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I'm going to get. This right here. I am a student again, and I can do anything. And I have an agenda. <laughs> Welcome back. We're just about finished on this New Year's edition of UMass Sports Insider. Don't forget, though, this weekend Atlantic 10 play begins for the UMass basketball teams, including a home matchup here at the Mullen Center for the Minute Women against VCU on Saturday. Next Tuesday, UMass Hockey is back at home. They've got a non-conference contest here at the Mullen Center against nationally ranked Yale. That's at 7 o'clock on Tuesday the 5th. For all of us here at UMass Athletics, a very happy and healthy new year and happy 2016. We'll have our first edition of the new year coming up next week here on UMass Sports Insider. Until then, I'm Josh Maurer. So long, everyone.